Instead, I think electrical doesn't have that much funding, so I did not do any part time. I didn't want any kind of distraction. <laughs> My tuition fee was waived off. We have just engineering specific career fair as well. Few companies who were willing to offer H one B masters. It's not like you'll be spoon fed. Uh, don't don't see the university ranking. What matters is how it, your department is ranked, how much funding, and what kind of projects they are being provided, <clears throat> because that's what matters at the end. Hello everyone. My name is Anshika. Welcome to College Dunya Study Abroad. Today we have a very interesting candidate with us. Hi Tanya. Hi. So Tanya is, has completed her masters in electrical engineering from Penn State University. So uh, Tanya, can you provide a brief background about yourself? Yeah. Thank you. Um. So hi everyone. My name is Tanya, and um, I did my masters from uh, Penn State University in electrical engineering. um for focusing more on uh, circuit design i did my bachelor's uh, back in india from gb pant university from uh, electronics and communication and um i graduated in 2021 so i directly came here for masters um in the us yeah so uh, how did you shortlist universities tanya also you did not have any work experience when did you start applying and when did you have in mind that you have to go abroad yeah um i think around like in the end of my third year that was when i started um, thinking about uh, masters in us and i started like uh, looking over what are process and what application everything is to be done mostly my focus i wasn't like really sure at that time what exact field i want to go in if it was electromagnetic circuit design or whatever but then i had a bit of idea so uh, most of my way of shortlisting universities was to see the professors what kind of uh, research work they are doing in their lab and if i would be interested in those um that kind of projects and all um i think masters is a lot of like research oriented so it's really necessary like apart from course work it's really necessary to see if you can actually you know um, gel into that uh, research work and if you can actually do that but also the course work if it is aligned to my interest and i think a good um, alumni network at the university that helps really so what colleges did you apply to um i applied to almost uh, eight or nine universities i don't remember all but i remember it's um, arizona state university stony brook sunny buffalo penn state of course virginia tech uc davis purdue and few more ambitious colleges as well yeah so uh, how many of those uh, gave you admits um i got um admits from Five or six, and I got rejected from three or four, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. what were the universities that? Um, I got so I got admit from um, Arizona State, um, Sunny Buffalo, Stony Brook, Virginia Tech, Penn State, and yeah. What was the major difference you saw between these universities that you chose Penn State over the others? I think it's the um, few of like the course structure and also few professors, which I think that uh, I mean there were few labs in which I thought that I could like work in these labs. Yeah, the work interested me, mm-hmm. and then also um, again coming back to the alumni network, I think Penn State has a really good network, so mm-hmm. that's why. <laughs> so uh how did you go for LORs like how did you approach them you were just out of college so you would have approached all the professors yeah so um i got so we i had to give three LORs so i got two LORs from like a professor professors in uh, undergrad and i got one LOR from i did a uh, internship in third year so i got one LOR from the uh, manager there okay and then for um the LORs in um undergrad i got one from the head of department the hod because mm-hmm. i mean they know about you overall and also one under from a professor under whom i did my like final year project so i was working under her so she had like more of an idea about you know how i'm working and how my research orientation is so yeah it's good to maintain a diversity between like having an internship and yeah. maybe a professor because a uh, studies they take a lot consideration of like how do you, how you do in the industry or if you have any strong connections there yeah yeah exactly right so uh how is the course structured how many credits did you have to complete to complete the course um so for masters you have to take um 30 credits um over like the period of 2 years okay. um it's divided like it can be thesis or non thesis so mm-hmm. for um if you're taking thesis you can take 24 credits of course work and 6 credits of research work 
I chose non-thesis, which was paper option. So I did 27 credits of coursework and three credits of paper. So okay. it was like um, nine courses. Got it. And then one research paper that you had to write. One research work, yeah, yeah. And what is the tuition fee of the whole course? So um, all in all, it it actually was like sixty sixty three k dollars for uh, the entire like for uh, all thirty credits and everything. But for me, I got uh, assist- teaching assistantship for one semester, so I had it like my tuition fee was waived off. Okay. So I think mine was covered in forty five k around. Okay, got it. So uh-huh. is it easy to get a TA and an RA? at penn state or it's not no i think uh, it also depends on the uh, department and how much funding they have mm-hmm. um in my case in penn state i think electrical doesn't have that much funding to um give assistantship to master students they do they do give almost all of their tas and ras to phd students mm-hmm. and i think um if they still do have some openings left it they do give it to some few masters i did not get to, uh, my teaching assistantship in the electrical department i got it in the computer science department because it's the same school so you can still apply for computer science um, graduate assistant roles mm-hmm. and then um, i think computer science has more funding they do uh, from for, sure. for all the students i've heard who are from computer science they definitely have a TA or an RA opportunity with them yeah or so did you so do I it mean, part time like right? like because you were a ta for a semester and other than that did you did you do any part times oh yeah i i did so um i think first semester i did not do any part time i just wanted to um gel in with how the course work is and you know i didn't want any kind of distraction but then uh, for second semester i did um i did a grader job and also a lab assistant jobs mm-hmm. are these two jobs um i think i was in total i was working like 15 hours a week got it and then um for third semester i had my teaching assistantship and then my last semester i could not do any kind of assistantship um because i just had like i had reduced course load okay. just course work so i did campus dining job so you had a lot of experience doing a lot of part times there <laughs> yeah I, i did like a lot of uh, different types of jobs it was it's a nice experience though so does your college have any career fairs you've got a really good job and you intern there too so can you talk more about it and let us know how did you get there yeah so um yeah penn state does have career fair there are a lot of uh, companies that come there for career fair we have like um i think it's like three or four days of career fair and even after that we have just engineering specific career fair as well and um uh, so i did go to career fair i went to a lot of i talked to a lot of uh, companies um i got so at the end of the career fair on the last day they have interviews as well if you select your resume so i went through like with three or four companies uh, interview but i think being an international student there were like really few companies who were willing to offer h1b yeah. so that is this like there is one thing you know which um i couldn't really go forward with the uh, with those companies but as for the company that i interned with and i'm not going to be continuing i i applied it like separately so i think that's where networking again comes into help <laughs> Yeah. So, did they convert your intern to a full-time offer? You had to apply again, or something like that. No, oh, they they converted it into full-time offer, so I didn't have to apply again. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Uh, so, how is the average package for an electrical engineering student at Penn State? Like, what is the ballpark number? I would say, like, as far as uh, my friends, my top two, I think if you're, um, it should be somewhere around like eighty plus. it also also depends like how much like in which state you are also working so like california for california it's almost like 100k plus i guess got it but also it also depends on how much experience you have and yeah, yeah, yeah definitely what you I, do. i think a lot of my friends had already like worked before prior coming uh, to for doing masters so i i always feel that i had like a bit of disadvantage but um, no it depends on as long as you have a job i don't think it is a disadvantage <laughs> right now i guess yeah <laughs> so how was the college location you were at state college it's a college town how did you like it there um i i love college towns i think they're like super safe and you can you can roam around everywhere but it does have its own disadvantages as well i guess so i mean the nearest city that we had was i think pittsburgh which is 
two hours away and Philadelphia, which is like three or four hours away. So you really can't, you know, like have the city exposure and all that. But then um, there are some really good uh, hikes and all if one's interested in hiking in Penn State. That's nice. Did yeah. you have Indian stores or Indian restaurants? Yeah, we did have like two or three Indian restaurants, which I mean, the food was fine. But good for when you really miss Indian food. Same with Virginia Tech. It's it's somewhere in <laughs> close to DC. DC is like four hours away. Oh. We have the same experience here. Yeah. <laughs> and Indian uh, stores as well. We had like we had international stores, Indian stores. So yeah, we did have like all everything that one thinks to get from India. I would like get this everything over there. <laughs> That's nice. So, how was your college experience overall? Could you summarize it into a few words? Um, I think um, in the beginning it was a bit overwhelming. I just, I think it took me like a, a bit of time to get on par with my whatever I've studied on in my undergrad and then what I'm going to be studying forward. Um, I was really confused what exact field I'm really interested in. But I think the one good thing about um, universities here is that you can you can like take you can choose your own subjects you can choose your own courses you can at least for the first week each semester you can attend as many classes you want to and you can see like you know if that professor is nice if the course is interesting to you or not so I think that the thing that it's flexible education here is flexible it really helped me um, obviously like. Uh, masters it's not like you'll be spoon fed here you have to you know like really talk to a lot of people get more guidance but I mean you're on your own after an age so yeah <laughs> but uh, I think the professors are really helpful here um, you can talk to them my advisor was really helpful he really helped me a lot through my research work and everything so it was good it was a good experience overall so for your research you just had to write a paper right so do you work for it like along like for all the semesters three or four semesters or it's just a one semester thing or a two semester i think it depends i mean i i know that i have a few friends who work for it for like two semesters mm-hmm. friends who only work maybe like one semester for me i actually talked to the professor in my second semester itself i first wanted to see how i just wanted to do like a small project under him so that i get like an idea how his work culture is and how the project is actually like if i do like to work or not and then i ended up liking his work a lot so i worked almost like um, three semesters with him that's nice yeah. and then by the time i was in my last semester or when i was ready to write my paper i already had like a lot of work done so it was like convenient for and I think this um, the research work experience really shows on your resume. So it's a good thing, and like no harm. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any final advice or suggestions for your viewers who who are planning to come to Penn State or pursue electrical engineering from any of the US universities? I think um, so. Advice number one would be to uh, like uh, don't don't see the university ranking. I think initially I was just seeing the university ranking. What matters is how your department is ranked, how much funding and what kind of projects they are being provided because that's what matters at the end. Um, secondly, talk to professors like beforehand or when you get the um, admit, admit to the university so that um, if there are any openings for any kind of assistantship, you know, they will have you in mind so you might get a more chance over others. Um, I guess apart from that, it can be overwhelming here so also like keep going uh, outside and have fun and you know like any kind of physical exercise I think it really like relieves stress a lot and one thing that I think that um, I think like as I said that um, networking is important so I did see that Penn State is a good like it has a good network but I forgot that for that you also need to have good networking skills so I think one should really develop that over the time Mm-hmm. But it's a good opportunity here to you know develop all of those skills. So yeah. Nice. So one point we missed while talking about the application was uh, was what what was your GRE score and I think that was optional at that time. But did you submit the GRE score and did you take TOEFL or IELTS? Yeah. Um. It was waived off uh, at that time, but I still like um, gave my GRE score. I just I did not have a like really good uh, CGPA in undergrad, so I thought it might uh, be balanced. I had my score was uh, 325 in GRE. That's great. And, thank you. And I had a, like I had 170 in like full marks in quant. So 
thought it might uh, you know compensate for my bad gp <laughs> um i gave toffel and i think i got it was out of 120 i got 109 yeah i think it's just a no, test to see your skill the yeah, yeah. So, yeah the marks matter there yeah. i don't think it matters that i mean yeah it doesn't matter that much even like after coming joining penn state when we had to apply for assistantship we anyways had to give another exam ao cpt which was to again uh, prove your english proficiency oh so, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Here we don't. I don't know any other exam like this to test your proficiency. Oh yeah, I think few universities have it. Penn State definitely has it. Okay, <laughs> that's great. It was nice talking to you, Tanya. Do you have any other stuff to tell our viewers? Nothing much. Just good luck, and you know, like I think um, keep connecting with people on LinkedIn because um, you get you get more idea and more help from people that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Bye bye.